Hey, Tyler, Theater Design Company. So doing a quick video for a customer, just kind of show them what we do. Um, and I decided just to turn it into kind of our, our final YouTube video on our demo room. As you know, nothing's ever complete, especially when you're in the industry, but this one sitting in our room is about 95%. And the images that you see scrolling through right now are these are the renderings that we built when this room was uh, just basically a cement shell. So we'll see how close, if you can take a look at these, make a mental note and see how close we got to finish this room per what we did the rendering. And uh, again, I just made this video for a couple customers to send it out to them for some jobs we're working on. Uh, but it gives you a good idea what we do, what we can do. And I hope you like it and happy holidays. Hey, this is Tyler, Theater Design Company. I'm going to do a long overdue complete tour of our demo space um, in terms of the home theater. Um, we've done demo uh, demos of this room here, so this is the uh, our dedicated bar space. Um, so we've got a ton of architectural stone, um, full bar, it's not 100% cleaned up. we got sim racing rig. Um, obviously I'm a car guy, so you got a bunch of car memorabilia. Got the door there that's secret going to the theater. So keep a uh, subscribe because that's going to be a complete new door, be a sliding door going into there um, with a proximity sensor. It should be actually really cool. And then this side of it will be wood cased with model cars. The other side is going to have like a hexagon fabric panel. And again, it's going to slide back into that wall there. Um, you've seen there's got some other videos. I'll link it below. But you got our bar here. So custom built door, it still needs to be glazed and we still need to stain the trim around. Um, being that we're professional installer sales, everything we don't get out to do too much work on our own stuff, but we try to. Some cars out there, so that's the shop area. And then that goes upstairs into the main house. Um, the entrance is all lowered in this house, so when we bring people over, they don't even see the main part of my home. They just go down to our demo space, then we have another side door um, off the shop and come in so kind of a neat little private space that we actually get to use as well um, so getting into some of the technology um, I won't go over too much of this room this is a RTI zone in here it's got four clip speakers uh, one clip sub We've got a KX10 remote um, so that's their touch screen we got a four button Pico and then again we've got the door so we'll jump into the theater here so again door we built we're not finished with it because we kind of change directions with the new sliding door we're putting in. But as you can see, I'll step back. I'm gonna give you an overview of what people look at when they come in. So again, tile floors, I get some grief for that, but there's no choice here. It's a working shop on the left side of the home and a kind of a mechanic shop on the right-hand side of the home. So carpet just doesn't fly and we have plenty of acoustical panels. Got the whole star ceiling that's acoustic. Every wall is acoustically treated. You got the chairs, it sounds perfectly fine. A um, couple things we built here, so we've got a flushed in uh, lighting system there. So that's that light is a linear light that's flushed in. We built the no now showing sign. We built the uh, backlit movie poster. And so we've got two things we're doing here as far as an update goes. This door is changing uh, to a slider. It's gonna slide mechanism back into there from auto slide. And I believe the now showing poster is probably gonna go to a digital movie poster. And we're gonna actually put that around a hexagon panel and have the whole thing hinged out because there's actually a fair amount of room behind there for storage, uh, empty boxes, and then our cable tray runs through there and some of the back of our racks and so on. So we need to be able to access that. Uh, jumping into here, we've got Epic Sky lights. So these are uh, all flushed into the trim. Um, this is a mixture of Epic Sky controllers and American Lighting Spectrum um, RGB strip, which is what we spec into jobs. And so seven zones of lighting, perimeter, stairs, cove, linear light, can lights, the star ceiling, and then you've got lights behind the screen, which we don't ever run because it just doesn't look right for the Seymour screen. It doesn't let enough light through. 
So I'm going to jump back into the room and shut the door. Do a quick walkthrough. So it's all kinetic noise. It's uh, TAD panels. Uh, the back wall's got a stealth diffusers in it. It's uh, Guilford of Maine fabric. Kinetic noise track. Again, you know, some grief for that, but we've got the uh, architectural stone columns. They work well for diffusion. Um, and they match the rest of the house. So aesthetics sometimes come into play more than form or function. Um, star ceiling. Should see a shooting star here any second. There you go. And then again, our now showing our linear right lights. And uh, that pops out for service right now. And then we've got our door, which we never finished. And the little bit of our left screen wall we didn't finish because we're probably going to change a couple things on the screen. The rest of the room is relatively complete. So those lights are flushed into the tile. And then I'll start naming off the speakers. And uh, this video will be fairly long because I have a couple videos I'm gonna interject with it that show you kind of the speaker layout, um, where they're placed and kind of what we're using for as far as the clips goes. Again, stair lights here, fortress seating. So those are just some octane seats, but uh, we've known a couple different seats. So we're looking at a few other manufacturers of seats for the center row. Uh, table, some pretty neat chairs and hexagon. Uh, another door back here that's got some flush hinges on a spring. Uh, we put the push button in. You can see that we've lined up the door trim. Uh, we built the door, lined up the door trim with the same seam as the fabric. So we've got our lighted exit sign. Uh, another upcoming video is we're taking out the can lights. So all the can lights are going to be American Lighting Spectrum lights. So that'll be RGBW with full color spectrum. Um, right now you're looking at 5,000 K bulbs to get the correct color temperature on the fabric. So you can actually see that it's a gray fabric. And then a couple other updates that we'll be doing on the room itself. It's probably gonna go to 115 inch 235 screen. Right now you're looking at 120 inch 60 by nine. And we're probably gonna split that wall or at least do about a foot and a half in of a black hexagon. Um, kind of a feature that'll kind of turn out at the bottom and uh, that's we got we're getting a little bit of light wash onto the gray but again some of this is for aesthetics and some of this is for demo so it's not a hundred percent blacked out room for perfect image and perfect you know things like that it's we like the form and function aspect of things too star ceiling is uh, two star kits from epic sky and then one shooting star kit again cove light all of our cove light jobs we do 90% of them we'll try to put diffusion on the top of it so we'll put it in a aluminum channel and we'll put the cover over it that gives you the good light output that you're seeing same with the perimeter lighting the stair lighting same with the linear lighting and the ceiling that's flushed into the drywall so make sure you do your research on the cover and make sure you do your research on your color temperature it's all super important um, we can control this well let me jump back into this so We've got our uh, JVC NZ7 there flushed in. We've done this on a few jobs where we use a smoked plexiglass panel, but it does still have an opening cut out, so we're not using an optic glass, but it gives it a nice clean kind of a theater look to it. We've got our rear surrounds that had to go up here because obviously we have the doors. So let's try to pull one of these off real quick without dropping it. So those are the flagship Klipsch in ceilings. So the RP180, RP LCRs and if you kind of were to look down you can see the angles coming right into our listening area so you'd be hard-pressed to find a speaker from here to here if you can hear that difference you've uh, you're doing a better job than I am so you'll probably get some flack from the super enthusiast guys but that is what it is you'd be hard-pressed to tell the difference between two feet of sound between having it in the correct location back here or up in the ceiling and again these are low ceilings anyway in the back with full height ceilings in the front. Can't forget Dr. Evil down there. So it's a Seymour Neo 4K screen. And then I doubt I can do a demo on it, but I can at least run through the touchscreen. So RTI, we're doing their touchscreen panels. We're doing uh, sources of this room. This room has an Apple TV, a Sony X800 4K player and Kaleidoscape using this Kaleidoscape Strato and then a server. And so we can get in here and hit, uh, see, we'll hit play on that. So, and then we would jump over to here, jump our lighting off. So then all our lights turn off. So back lights still on, but 
doubt this camera can pick up the uh, image anyway. But here you got some Dolby Atmos demo disc, which is one of the common ones we play. The NZ7 has a great image quality to it. It's not a flagship projector, but it's right up there with some of the best. So, tons of bass. This room has a bunch of, uh, a lot of output as far as that goes. I'll pop this back open. The other thing nice about the uh, Kaleidoscape that we're doing now for demos is that it's how fast it works. So we can jump in here and if, say we want to hit menu, we can go down to our covers. And so you can see it's nearly, nearly instantaneous to pull up whatever movie we want. Um, we've had a Zipedi in here. We've had a few others. We've done Windows Media Servers with my movies. All of those, there's nothing faster than this. There's nothing better image quality. You pay for it, but it is the best. So pretty neat. Um, about four or 500 movies on here, or maybe 100 that are 4K HDR, another few hundred that are HD and Blu-ray. Um, and I'll go into that a little bit too. So let me jump back out here. So this is kind of what we call our lobby space. Again, I'm car guys, so we got some car racks. We got speaker stands for demoing, not speakers in that other room. Um, again, I'll kind of just peek in there, but that room's not really ready to show, but it's kind of where we demo some of our Lutron lighting. Clips professional speakers, that's what's running in there. Some demo speakers here, some trade-in speakers. And then uh, I'll show this. So this is the intake for our hush box. And so we use this dual purpose, storing some remotes, some movies, but you can see we've got a four inch inlet. And then that jumps over. It's the back of the NZ7. That thing's rising on, it's got kinetic noise dampers on there. Those are actually from their floating floors, but they work really well to dampen the projector. And then we've got another AC Infinity fan here. We're sitting about 82 degrees and this is running for three or four hours. So we're well within temperature of the JVC. You see the probes up here at its highest point. And then networked cabled in, SSF clear line. So we've got one HDMI two in for the Kaleidoscape Direct. And then we got one coming from the audio control. So that gives us a direct HDMI feed uh, and video feed in from the Kaleidoscape. And then the Kaleidoscape has an HDMI audio out that runs in for its audio portion. A little lighting controller. Wire's relatively clean. It's not perfect. And nice clean look. And then again, back of the door. So that's flushed in. Some more Lutron lighting. Barn door that kind of covers this up. Usually not shut. And then into the stuff that you guys want to see. So I'll go through each rack real quick. Um, let's start with these. So these are wire path panels. So first panel here is doing some epic links. So that's our 232 stuff. That's running the star ceiling and controlling the RGB lighting. And then we're running uh, RAW 2 here. Um, ironically, this house has Homeworks RAW 2 and RAW 3 because I'm in the business. So that's what we're running. Um, but the theater itself is running RAW 2 with the main repeater. Homeworks for the office. And then RAW 3 is what's mostly upstairs. It's movie poster signs. Uh, those are the ones you get off Etsy. They're pretty cool. And then these are all the Epic Sky RGB lighting. So we put these into another wire path enclosure. So four of those. The bottom advanced controller is actually split into three. So we're using one output for the now showing, one for the exit sign and then one for the back movie poster sign. The other three are the full RGB uh, W for perimeter, cove, and stair lights. And then that goes into our shop. Uh, we've got a Nest, new Aero POE6 for internet. We've kind of ditched the ubiquity thing. Um, got these uh, kind of turnstile things for candy, which are just awesome. Highly recommend them if you have the space for them. Little table to put stuff on. And then jumping into the stuff, what everybody wants to see. So try to go slow on this as I can so people can see what's about. But basically we've got a ton of Panamax Furman in here. Um, I'll start with the power first. So the room itself has a 20 amp dedicated for the theater, 20 amp dedicated for the network, and an additional 20 amp dedicated for the whole house audio. So you're looking at about 60 amps of power. Um, the theater itself is running into the Furman IT reference. The Furman above it is specifically, we're using that device specifically to do the 12 volt trigger. 
and uh, I'll inject a video on that on how those things turn on and off because it's pretty cool how they the light, they just light on and off is a pretty neat effect and then across the top we have all the Furmans so these are the PL8Cs everything is in uh, strong and mid-Atlantic equipment racks with A-faces um, custom face plates and then on the left full left rack we start with the Furman We've got an Atlona 4K video uh, switcher. So that runs out to a few of the other TVs in the house and bar and garage. Um, 32 channel camera, server, uh, AC Affinity fan that actually controls the fans that are in each rack. And then those uh, suck out of this room to the outside with a six inch fan. Some Arachnus switches, um, those are all wired in with fiber. Uh, I think we got a 16 port, eight port PoE for the RTI, another eight port for the theater. Uh, we got a Panamax um, sequential, so that's their pro. One of their we got one of their Pro 20s, one of their Pro 15 amps. Battery backup for the cameras and network uh, on the very bottom. Kaleidoscape M700. That's what does the uh, movie server. Um, what we're using that mainly is for category uh, cataloging the discs, so we can drop discs in there. Kaleidoscape picks them up, and then if we want to do disc to digital, they show that we own that. Save a few bucks each disc. Um, plus we get to see some of our legacy movies, which is nice. Um, so again, far left rack is mainly uh, network security, some video switching. Uh, center rack, again, another Furman. And then we have an RTI XP8S that's running the demo space. And then we have an RTI XP8V. That uh, only difference is they're both control processors. The V is video out. So the video out goes into the HDMI switcher and we'll end up having a kind of a page on it to alert us of uh, doors opening, close, HVAC temps, kind of a neat uh, house system that we're putting in with that. Um, it's not 100%, it's probably about 80% done. Uh, RTI zone controller for the audio. Um, we're not using any of the internal amps, those are all below. RTI MS3 uh, for the music, and then an old RTI, uh, kind of just a rack mount thing that we have a couple things in, some legacy devices. Uh, one theater device in there, which is the the Sony M8000, uh, or excuse me, 800. So that's our 4K player for the theater. And then TD, TDG Audio and Vanguard, same company. So that's all our house audio. And then again, another sequential switcher from Panamax to uh, turn everything on off correctly. And then we've got our theater rack. So again, another Furman. And again, the Furmans have lights. It's pretty neat when they're off. You can turn them on. And then if I end up turning the lights off in here at night, each one of those can light up across. Uh, it's a pretty neat effect. Be cool if they were LED or RGB, but I think what they do is pretty neat. So again, we can run those out at night just to see stuff if we have our lights off and want to change a disc or something. It's kind of a neat feature. And they're slide in. So jumping back to that, we've got the Kaleidoscape Terra. We've got the Kaleidoscape uh, Strato for our, music, our movie player. Uh, running the audio control Maestro X7 and then speaker system amplifiers for the theater. So RS1000 for the left sub, RS1000 for the right sub. The Avalon G60 is uh, the top one here is bridged for the left and right. So about 600 watts per speaker. The one below it, the left side of that amp is bridged for the center. And then the right side does our front wides. And then jumping down to the third Avalon, that does the sides and rears. And then the bottom Avalon is doing the uh, four Atmos speakers. And the bottom RS500 uh, is doing uh, two triad 12-inch, uh, the porthole subs. And then again, the Furman for power sequencing. And really nothing else to see in here. A um, couple notes here. I think I mentioned the HDMI cabling is all SSF clear line. So it's all 8K, 48 gigabit cabling direct and this whole rack here is all wired with Kimber so the whole entire equipment rack is uh, Kimber cable um, there should be a couple videos of that or a picture of that built um, everything else in the rack is just our typical structured cable product and wire path product from our vendors and then I think that's about all I can show you guys there as far as updates go on equipment uh, nothing really new that we're putting in here we got the Kaleidoscape we'll probably put another storage server or two in for movies um, and then the updates on this is probably going to go to a 235 screen which we'll do a video showing that um, at the end of this I'm going to inject a couple videos just showing cool things on the room so uh, I've got a video on the speaker layout 
that we've shown a couple of customers just because everything's hidden, kind of show where they're at. And then I'll do one of the amplifiers turning on and off. And then new videos for the YouTube channel will be, the big one will be a sliding door for that and reworking that whole corner. And then the 235 screen. Um, and then we're probably gonna do, like I said, digital movie poster. Um, no real sound upgrades, uh, acoustical upgrades, just some tweaks and doing those last little bit of finishing touches. But it's hard when you're out in the field doing customers jobs and then coming home and doing yours, you don't really wanna do it. Um, other than that, uh, I think that'll end this video as far as me talking and then I'll do a couple of the speaker explainers and I uh, hope you like it. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.